So today let's see what's inside of these two cheap plastic ridiculous looking Aliexpress headlamps. And let's also measure the capacity of the internal batteries. This one's definitely so ridiculously huge and cumbersome that I would never use it. It's charging a blinking green light. This one is a bit smaller and still could make some sense. Let's also measure the capacity of its battery and see the internals. This one is a 4 LED battery state indicator. And the one is charging. The last one is blinking. Now this one is fully charged. This one as well, a steady green light here. And I'm sorry for the weird voice, but at least you know you're not listening to some AI. Every search engine or platform should have the option to exclude AI generated content. Maybe just for the sake of our sanity and to prevent us from wasting our time trying to find something made by humans in an overwhelming flood of this nonsense. But also if you use it to train the next generation of AI, how the hell it can be better than the previous one when it's eating the poop of its predecessor. But anyway, I should probably be talking about something I understand a little bit. Let's take a look at this one. I already took the four screws from it and here's the cover and here's the battery in it. Which actually says the capacity on it. 800 milliamp powers only. It's 18650. You can actually fit about 3500 into this size of a battery. But I plan to measure its capacity anyway and here's the board and the reflectors under it. It's actually one piece of plastic. This plexiglass cover, the parabolas and the board with not much on it. The 10 lower power LEDs. One more powerful LED, two transistors to switch the groups. Some zero ohm jumpers. Couple of resistors, a capacitor, and one chip which probably does everything. It's an aluminium substrate, but quite thin. Here's the button. And a micro USB port here, and that's it. With a fully charged battery, the center LED 1.3 amps, the side LED is 2 amps, and all combined 2.2 amps. Let's recharge it a little bit to measure the capacity correctly, and of course, at such discharging current, the battery is not going to last very long. And what also surprised me is that I can see no resistor with a value, which would make sense as a series resistor of the LEDs, so I guess the current is just limited by the internal impedance of the LEDs and the switching transistors, and of course the internal impedance or resistance of the battery. A higher capacity battery would have a lower internal resistance, which would probably allow more current and destroy the LEDs, and if not a higher capacity would be able to run it longer and the LEDs would overheat. So the battery might be the part of the current limitation and also the limitation of the operating time. Now let's open the other one. The plexiglass is screwed on it, but I think it's better to open it from this side. Four screws. And then... Here are the parabolas. There are separate pieces in this one. And the board. Eight LEDs. Six smaller ones, two more powerful ones. Three wires going to the board, again aluminium substrate, but no other components on this one. This is a two board construction and there is the battery and an empty space here. I guess it was actually designed for two such cells here. Definitely, but they put just one in it. Is it a higher capacity than the other one? Well, 1200 milliamp hours. That's a bit of an improvement in comparison to the other one, but still about one third of the capacity you could fit into this thing. That's it, here's the button, the charging port, the LEDs indicating the battery state, and some chips. One is probably the mode chip, one the charging controller, and the charging controller is obviously this one, and the other one has no marking, but it has to be to control the modes. Two switching transistors for the two groups of LEDs, and this one actually does have some resistors in a series with the LEDs. You can see something like 3 ohms and 1.5 ohms, so this one is more likely not to bake its LEDs actually. And the current is these two LEDs, a half an amp, the other LEDs 0.25 amps, and a combined 0.68 amps. This one is way more conservative. If you put two pieces of a 3500 mAh battery into it, it would be 7000 mAh. And in the combined mode, it draws about 700 mAh, which would make it last about 10 hours. Given it was a constant current, but in reality, there's no constant current circuit, so the current is going to decline as the battery discharges. So it's going to last even longer, but it will progressively get dimmer. I recharged this one for the test. And charging the battery of the other one for the capacity test. It's overcharging it to 4.3 volts. And now of course my DIY battery analyzers. Powered using my DIY bench power supply, of course. Let's discharge the batteries at half an amp. Down to 3 volts. Let's start. And it's discharging now. 
and that's the capacity of the batteries. The overcharged 800mAh power one barely makes it to its nominal, the 1200mAh power one slightly above, and that's the energy in what hours in them. I guess you know what LEDs are replacing the original 6 cool white LEDs. I could actually give it some better cells. Taken from something for free, about 2.5 amp hours. Let's mark them. The watt hours. One more used cell tested here and... I also simultaneously tested this one because I have two battery analyzers. And that's the bigger one also used. This one goes into this headlamp. I have in total three pieces of 18650. One has the heat shrink intact. I will keep it for the flashlights with a removable battery and these two will go into this. They will be built in permanently, they don't have to look nice. I've made a battery pack, even with a fuse. And the inevitable fluorescent sticker over the obnoxious blue LEDs, which I absolutely hate. I've changed the yellow LED resistor. I reassembled it, I also gave it new wires to the LEDs, instead of the super thin flimsy ones. This reduces the total resistance by about 0.1 ohm, but it's completely fine because it's reducing later its duty cycle to about 50%. Let's just put the cover back. Or let's test it before that. Now the cover's back on it. Nice. Cool white, yellow, and it blends nicely into warm white. After one minute it starts pulse with modulating. 3 minutes from turning it on and it's at 75% and 5 minutes from turning it on it settles at 50% about and the pulse width modulation frequency is almost 1 kHz. The cool white mode behaves the same as the yellow one and also the exact same behavior for the combined mode which doesn't make much sense because if it can handle 50% in the combined mode shouldn't it be able to run continuously in the individual modes? But anyway, it's definitely usable. If I turn it off and back on immediately, it resets to the full power. That's it, and if you like my videos, please consider subscribing, supporting my channel on Patreon or using the thanks button, because this is what keeps the channel running. And big thanks to all of you who already support me.